I've always been a personal finance nerd and I've stumbled upon that financial freedom dream that everyone seems to have basically since I started working. So I've learned a lot, I optimize my money everywhere, and right now I'm at the stage where I've saved up and invested over 100,000 ringgit. If you want to see how I did it, check out this video here. But I know that some of you are probably not at this stage yet, so I thought I'd make this video. If I had to start all over again from scratch, from a net worth of zero ringgit, this is what I'd do. So I'm breaking this down into three different parts, starting from the first one, which is my income or earnings. When people talk about personal finance, they usually talk about the standard stuff like how to budget your money or how to invest to grow your wealth. Those things are important. I will share more about that later in this video. But in my opinion, one critical step to personal finance is how much money you actually make every single month. So, you know, even if you can save 50% of your income, if you're currently earning just 2,000, 2,500 ringgit every month, it's still not a lot of money. Also, there is a cap to how much you can save. If you earn 2,000 ringgit a month, you can't save 2,500, 3,000 ringgit, but there's no cap to how much money you can earn. So the first thing that I would do in this journey is I would take a good look at my current job. New year, new me, right? Honestly speaking, with my five years of working experience and the companies I've worked at, I wouldn't accept any job that's paying me less than 7,000 ringgit. If you're a fresh grad and you're living in KL, I would say the absolute minimum is 3,000 ringgit a month. So if I was starting from zero and I really wanted to rebuild my savings as fast as possible, then my job will have to offer me at least one of these two things, ideally both. But the first option is, of course, a high salary. So I wouldn't really mind if this job has, you know, long working hours, I don't have a work-life balance, or maybe even the job isn't so enjoyable. As long as it's offering me a high pay, I will be taking it on. Of course, the job can't be so bad, like, can't be so unbearable that I can't even survive six months there. But, you know, if it's okay, then I will stick to it. So the only reason that I would take a lower paying job is if it's gonna offer me some crazy career growth. So for example, I found this program called Invest Ads Leadership Program. It's in collaboration with Securities Commission, I think, but basically you're gonna be working there for six months where you're gonna earn just 2,000 to 2,400 ringgit. But the thing is, you could get an internship placement with investment banks. And after you're done with this program, you could get offered a job into these investment banks. So yeah, in this situation, I would do it. You know, I would sacrifice getting a low-ish salary for six months because I know or I hope that after this program completes, I could get a good job where the salary is a lot higher than what I'm earning right now. So if I wasn't getting either of these, if I'm not getting a high salary or good career growth, then I would seriously consider leaving my job. Based on my years of working, based on looking at some friends, some ex-colleagues, I just know that the best opportunity for you to get good salary growth is by changing companies. For some reason, your existing company just won't give you huge increments because it would mess up with company structure or something like that. Trust me, they would rather let you leave and then hire someone else and give them the salary that you wanted in the first place. Don't ask me why, that's just how the world works. So yeah, if I didn't think that I was going to get a promotion or a big increment in my current job, then I would probably look at switching jobs. Usually bonus season is around March to April, so I'll try to time my exit around that period just so that I can collect my final bonus. By the way, a tip, if your new company wants you to join earlier, so let's say your bonus is in March, but your new company wants you to join in January, then go ahead and ask for a sign on bonus to basically replace the bonus that you're going to miss from your current company. I did this at my last job and it did give me a sign-on bonus. In terms of what kind of jobs I'll be looking for, if I had to start all over again, I would obviously choose a highly demanded job that's going to pay me a good salary. So obviously I can't go and say I want to be a surgeon or you know an oil and gas engineer because I have zero experience and you need a degree to do that. So things that I would consider is investment banking slash management consulting. So those jobs I know pay you high right off the gate, even as a fresh grad. And then your salary and career growth, it's basically pretty fast and high as well. Other options that I would consider is being a sales or account manager. So look for industries that have pretty good growth. These guys can actually earn quite a bit of money. You know, your base salary might be low, but with commissions, incentives, all those stuff, you can easily get five figure salary every single month. And the final thing that I would consider is something in the tech world. So maybe being a software developer, being in the cybersecurity field, or even being a product manager. I know all of these jobs do pay well as well. 
maybe not as high as the other two jobs I was talking about, but still a good income. I know that these jobs could be taxing. It could mean that I would have to sacrifice some work-life balance. But like I said, at this age in my 20s, I really want to ramp up my savings as fast as possible. So I am willing to sacrifice to get a higher income. And then on top of this, I will also look for any opportunities for side income. So things like creating content, doing affiliate marketing, or you know, freelancing if you have any skills that you can offer. I know in terms of freelancing, skills like digital marketing, copywriting, these skills are high in demand and companies are willing to pay freelancers quite a bit of money. And even if you don't have these skills, it's actually not that hard to start these days. What I would do is I'd take some free courses online, start building my portfolio, and then try and offer my services to clients. Also, if I went down this route, I would definitely try to build a social presence on somewhere like TikTok or Twitter, depending on what I'm doing. Trust me, this works. I did this for this YouTube channel as well. So this year, I tried to grow our Twitter and TikTok, and it will really give you a lot more opportunities. People will think you're more credible, and you can get quite a bit of deals just from having an online presence. So to summarize this earnings part, what I would do first is I would take a good look at my current job. Am I going to get a big increment or promotion? And do I have good career growth prospects? If I don't have either of those, then it's time to look for something new. And if I was going to change jobs, I would look for a minimum of 20% increment, ideally 30%. This will depend on your current salary. I would say if you have a lower salary, try to aim for a bigger jump. And if my job was heavy, if it was taxing, then obviously I would demand a higher salary. But if it wasn't so taxing, then I will also look at other side income opportunities. Now that I've gotten that sorted out, it's time to think about how to manage my money so that I can save what I earn. So I said earlier, the first step is to earn a larger income, but there's no point earning more money if you're just going to spend it all because that would mean that my net worth would be the same, zero. So the first thing that I would do is I would start tracking my expenses. So this one, we want to do it for a minimum of three months, ideally forever. Yes, it is tedious, you know, typing in your expenses every single day. It is tedious, but if you just keep doing it, it becomes a habit and you won't even realize it anymore. So the reason that we want to do this is extremely important because how are we going to control our costs or reduce our costs if we don't know where our money is going to go in the first place? So yeah, just download some app from the App Store, make sure you find a free one, I wouldn't pay for any of these, and then start recording your transactions every single day for at least three months. I use this app called Money Manager, but honestly, you can just choose anyone out there. At the same time, I will also come up with a budget for myself. So there are so many different budgeting options out there, you can search for it online. Personally, my favorite is the reverse budgeting method where essentially I just pay myself first. So every month when my income comes in, I'm just going to take 10, 20%, whatever the allocation is and move it to my savings slash investments first. And then I would spend the rest of it however I want. But if you are new to managing money, I would suggest something more rigid like the 50, 30, 20 rule. This one is extremely popular and should work for most people. But if you want to see all of the different budgeting methods that you can choose from, check out our video here. On this topic, I will also want to find the right balance between saving my money for the future and enjoying myself. So obviously, I don't want to spend all of my money that I have no savings left, but I also don't want to save so much money that I don't have any fun experiences to remember. Especially at this age, you know, I'm still in my 20s. There's a lot of things that I want to do that I probably can't do when I'm older, like let's say going on holiday with friends. So yeah, it's just about finding balance. Don't save so much. Don't spend so much. Since I'm starting over, I will also need to rebuild my emergency funds. So for those of you who don't know, an emergency fund is essentially just some cash that we set aside for any emergencies that could come in life, like let's say your car broke down unexpectedly, or you have to pay some medical bills, or let's say even you lose your income. The last thing that I would want is to have to take on loans to pay for these emergencies because these loans will just kill me. So this to me is one of the most important aspects of personal finance having an emergency fund. So what I would do is I would save up as much as possible. I will cut down the cost as much as I can and I won't put my cash in any other savings or investments until I can fill up my emergency fund. And then I'll keep this money in a separate place so I don't want to mix up my funds so I don't ac accidentally spend it. So maybe I would put it in a different bank account or maybe put it in a money market fund to generate some interest. So general rule of thumb for emergency funds, most people would aim for three to six months worth of your expenses. I know some people are more conservative, they will go for 12 months, but 
personally for me, I would just do maybe four or five months. But what I would do is I would actually cheat a bit if I had to start all over again. So this is what I mean. I would, like I said, I would go extreme, cost cutting mode, don't put my money anywhere else, but I will just aim for a one month emergency fund first. So once I achieve one month, that will take my foot off the gas a bit. Of course, I still want to get to that three month mark, but maybe I'll reduce my contributions a bit just because I want to put some excess cash to the final part, which is investing. By the way, if you guys want to invest in global stocks and ETFs, then check out M Plus Global. They are a local broker that's fully regulated by Securities Commission Malaysia, and it's pretty easy to use for beginners. If you sign up with my link, I'll leave it down below, you will get one free Krispy Kreme share and you'll get a $7 trading voucher as well to offset your first trade. If you want to know more about M Plus Global, including how you can use it, how to make a trade and stuff like that, you can check out our review here. So on to the investing part now. At this age, my full focus will be on capital growth, not capital preservation. You know, I'm young and broke. I don't have a lot of wealth to protect in the first place anyway. So I wouldn't want to put my investments into things like fixed deposits because, you know, the interest is just not high enough. 2 to 3% a year. If I had 10 million ringgit, sure. But with just 10,000 ringgit, it's just not enough. So the best way for me to do this is to invest in other assets like stocks, ETFs, and maybe even a bit of crypto. But before I even get into the investing part, I'll first have to take a look at my loans, so any loans I currently have. If I have high interest loans like credit card debt, then that will be my main focus because you know credit card debt, it can cost you about I think 18% per annum. And if you try to invest your money anywhere else, it's gonna be hard for you to even get 18%. So if I had any credit card debt, I would pay that off first. But if I had, you know, other lower interest, normal kind of debt like PTPTN, a car loan and stuff like that, I will just continue paying it off monthly. I won't rush because I want to use that extra cash to invest my money and earn me higher returns. So I would say once I have my emergency fund sorted and I have my high interest loans all sorted as well, I will put nearly all of my excess cash into investments that's going to give me high returns. I would also maybe consider Amana Saham just because it gives me a good risk-free return of around 4 to 5%. I would also consider ASB financing. I think that's a good way for us to leverage loans to get even more returns from ASB. But I guess in recent years, it hasn't been so good just because ASB dividends has been going down and loan interest rates have been going up. But as soon as ASB announces the dividend for this year, I'll be making a video about whether ASB financing is still worth taking. But I'll still want a majority of my investments into other assets that can give me higher returns, even though yes, it could mean higher risk. So if I wanted a completely hands-off approach, I would go for robo-advisors like Stashway or Wahid. I think those are great. But if I wanted to be a bit more active, which personally I do, I would go and invest in ETFs directly that will give me high returns and I would focus on specifically global ETFs because unfortunately, the Malaysian market just hasn't been so great. So if you look at something basic like the S&P 500, you know, this is one of the most invested ETFs in the world. It's already up 20% so far in 2023. And if you look at the last 10 years, the performance has given us over 11% every single year on average. So these are the kinds of returns that I'll be looking for, not the 2 to 3%. If I wanted to take an even more active role for potentially high returns, I could also look at investing in individual stocks instead of ETFs. So for example, looking at Nvidia, this year alone is up by more than 200% and that's giving me some major FOMO. But individual stocks is not really my game anymore. For my long-term investing portfolio, it's fully into ETFs. But I guess, you know, if you have the interest and you want to try and invest in individual stocks, you know, you like it, go ahead and try, it could reward you really well if you know what you're doing. So earning more money and saving it is what will help me build up my initial capital, but investing will be the one that will really help me grow my wealth. I won't talk too much more about investing because we have a lot of videos on it, but if you guys want, let me know down in the comments, we could make a complete beginner's guide to investing in 2024. So those would be the steps that I would take in particular order if I had to start from scratch from a zero net worth in 2024. I know that, you know, trying to save money and trying to grow your net worth, it seems very hard, but trust me, it is doable, especially if you follow the steps of looking at your earning, how you can save more money and how you can invest. You would be definitely better off than you were in 2023. 
Let me know in the comments what you would do if you had to start all over again in 2024. Give us a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.